A new collection featuring four maps of early Singapore is certain to get philatelists excited. While well, the maps were originally from the National Library's Rare Materials Collection, they document Singapore's importance as a navigational landmark and a trade hub, even before the arrival of the British in 1819. While well, the stamps bear indigenous, indigenous names associated with the island. And joining us tonight is Makasuri Parasami, Senior Librarian for Rare Materials at the National Library Board. So we have these old maps on these new stamps. Just how old are these maps? Well, these maps that are featured on the uh, stamps are produced from the 17th and the 18th um, centuries. And one of the four maps featured on the stamps actually first appeared in manuscript form and another appeared in a book. So three of these are European maps, while one is a Chinese map. Also, we see that there are some indigenous names that are found on the maps. Uh, can you tell us about those and the significance? Okay, the interesting thing about um, the indigenous names are you can actually find on these maps names like Tamasik and Pulau Panjang, which were names, uh, local names that were used for ancient um, Singapore. Tamasik is actually featured uh, on the Chinese map that's featured on the stamp, and it's known as Tan Masi. Tamasik actually means a Malay word for sea town, while Pulau Panjang means long island. And if you look at um, the Iradia map that's featured uh, on the stamps, uh, it was originally drawn in 1604. You can actually see um, three distinct uh, place names on the eastern side of the island, uh, such as Sungai Budok, Tanamera and um, Tanjung Ru. And the same map also marked the location of a Shabandar, or what you call a harbour master's compound, um, which actually shows that Singapore was an active uh, harbour port you know, in the um, 17th century. So what's interesting is that knowing these place names um, have been around since the 17th century will help us appreciate the Singapore's rich and interesting past. And these maps, you know, as you're saying, you know, shows basically our early maritime uh, roots. And how do you think that also shapes our perspective of early Singapore and where we are now, you know, as modern Singapore? Okay, that's, um, that's an interesting question because um, early maps actually offer a fascinating window into Singapore's history. We may be used to reading about Singapore in books, but um, maps actually uh, offer you a, a, what you call a visual record of uh, Singapore's early um, history. So the maps featured on these stands provide um, an evidence of what you call Singapore's existence as an important navigational landmark you know, and in the um, east-west maritime trade routes. And that's long before the British set up a trading post here in 1819. And most importantly, these maps actually document Singapore's early um, maritime routes, which actually help us in a way to understand the development of uh, modern Singapore as a global trading and shipping hub. But very quickly, uh, I was just curious, there are many ways where the National Library can platform these wonderful maps. Uh, why did you choose to work with uh, Singapore? Yes. Okay, that's because in 2019, the um, Infocom Media Development Authority, IMDA, invited all public sector agencies to submit ideas for the national postage stamps. So we proposed featuring rare maps from the National Library's collection. And since these maps showcase uh, some of the early names of ancient Singapore, they were selected. And as you know, stamps are small, but they are also very interesting items. And NLB thought that this would be a novel way for us to promote our collections and get the public interested in our rare materials collection as well. Lovely stories. And thank you so much for telling them to us. Marcus Wari, Periyasami, Senior Librarian for Rare Materials at the National Library Board. Thank you.